Well, I'm looking at YouTube and there's a problem with it and I'm not sure just why. Hopefully it's going to come back up. Let's see what's going on with it. Hold on. Well, anyway, we're here. Let me try this again. Yeah. All right, Facebook is back up. We'll see what's going on. Let me get out of here. Hold on. YouTube and it's going to have some issues. I do not know what's going on. Our internet is up. It's just giving us a hard time today. But we are on Facebook and hopefully I can upload that. <clears throat> I guess we're going to have to get closer. <laughs> mm. There he is. Oh Lord. Close to you. Um, I need to believe that God's going to fix this, whatever it is. So. Let's see what we can do next. So anyway, here we are on YouTube Live. Um, it will not be the link that I sent out. So anyway, how about opening up with prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your written word. We thank you for the living word, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we thank you for making the living word real to our understanding, real in the wisdom and power of the Holy Ghost. We praise you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, well, let me just say this. We're not surprised these things happen because it's happening to a lot of ministries. But we are here, and we're glad to be here this morning. We have a good word that God's given us, and we will be taking communion this morning. So I'm going to start out with some worship and praise because we know that when the praise goes up the power comes down when the praise goes up the power comes down when the praise goes up the power comes down so let's just praise the lord hallelujah celebrate jesus celebrate celebrate jesus celebrate celebrate jesus celebrate
will know that we're a friend of God. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. If you're walking through the valley, there are shadows all around. Each moment in the crucified, are you washed? 
I will come, I will come and, bow down and bow down at your feet, at your feet Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, in your presence, your presence is fullness, fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. There is nothing, there is no one that compares to you. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. It is you, it is you, it is you, it is you that I love. It is you, my Lord and King, I apprehend to know and be known you. It is you, it is you that I worship, holy, holy, worthy, oh so worthy. you and we worship you, you today. Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Yes. <laughs> what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We give praise and honor to his holy name. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. 
At the end of our service today, we'll be taking Holy Communion. But we're going to get into the Word today. And we were studying some things the other day. I was reading, and this just stuck out to at me. And I feel like it's something that we all need to know. And if I were to name this, it would be called Required by God. When we know that God requires something, then we ought to be very, very convinced that that's what we should seek after. Yes. If he has a requirement, we should know what it is. Let's turn in the book of Micah, Old Testament, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. It's towards the end of the Old Testament. We're going to go into chapter 6. I'm going to lay a little background. Micah was a prophet. He was a contemporary of several other ones. And God met him and told him that he was to proclaim this word to Israel and to Jacob, Judah. And when he put the word out, it was strong. I think it's a word, if you read this book, that the world needs to listen to today. And when we get into chapter 6, Micah is talking to God. And in verse 6, if you've got Micah verse chapter 6, verse 6, just read verse 6. Just here. verse 6, okay. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before <clears throat> the high God? <laughs> shall I come before him with burnt offerings? With calves of a year old? Go on with seven. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? Or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? The fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? So Micah is asking the Lord, what, do I, what am I supposed to do? Like many of us, what are we supposed to do in this period of time? How can we make a difference? How can we make a difference? So we come to verse 8, and it says, He hath shewed thee, O man, what is good, and what the Lord requireth thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. So let's break this down. It says, He hath shewed thee, O man, what is good. Well, the word showed, S-H-E-W-E-D, is Old Testament for show. It means to front or to confront. It means to stand boldly out or expose, to predict or profess, to certify. So it's saying here, he has showed thee, O man, what is good. And I like to go into Genesis chapter 39 and there's a verse in here that caught my attention also, and it had to do with Joseph. In Genesis 39, verse 21. You might want to go there with your word. <clears throat> All right, this was after Joseph had been taken into slavery in Egypt. He's in Potiphar's house. And it says, But the Lord was with Joseph. He's in prison now, falsely accused, and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Joseph, there's nothing in Scripture about Joseph that's complained when he was talking to Potiphar. Well, I shouldn't even be here. I'm a prince. No, he didn't do any of that. God showed Joseph mercy and he shows us mercy, too, when we're going through those difficult times. He shows us mercy. Now, look at the word old man here in back in Micah. Old oh. man. Oh. The word man there comes from Adam. Adam means a common man, a human being, a man. So, that includes me and you. Adam is the race of human beings, not animals, not dogs, cats. Wolves, not anything. And it's not gender related. It includes right. males and females. <clears throat> it says, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. Now, the word good, I like this. That word good means beautiful, ah, cheerful, the best, the finest. And 
God takes us then into Isaiah. I want to say this, what is good. Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52. We're breaking this down so you'll know what God requires of you. Isaiah 52, verse 7. It says, How beautiful or how good on the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. So every time we share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, we are doing what he's telling us to do. What is good? God shows us what is good through his word. And then, of course, is the word Lord, which is Yahweh or Jehovah. And that is the word that means God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then we get to the word, and what doth the Lord require? Hmm. The word require here means to ask or to make an inquisition, to search it out. It also means search it out. And it also means to seek, to seek. The Lord require. He wants us to search things out in the scriptures. What is it he wants us to search out? What's required of us? Then it goes on, he says, to be just, to do justly. Now, justly means a proper verdict. It means the divine law of God. It means a person's right or privilege. And it also means discretion and in judgment. Now keep your finger in Micah, but let's go to Luke chapter 23, because this helps us understand what's required of us by God. Luke chapter 23, and I'm going to read two verses, three verses there. Now, Jesus is on the cross, dying, and let's look at 39. And one of the malefactors, criminals, which were hanged, hang, railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. All right, why don't you take care of us? And he said, But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not fear God? Seeing thou are in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, in other words, we deserve what we're getting. That's what the word justly means in Micah. For we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss or nothing wrong. And then he turned to Jesus and he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He recognized his sin. And before God on the cross right there, he said, I don't deserve, you don't deserve it, but I do. You're paying the price for my sin. The justice, God's justice, was put on Jesus on the cross. Then back to Micah, it says, to do justly and to love mercy. Now, I have some family members that are very kind, and that's mercy. It means have favor on, have pity on somebody, to do good, to have loving kindness. And in Micah chapter 7, Verse 18, it said, Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passes by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delights in mercy. God delights in mercy. Let's look at Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. This is more of a teaching today than just preaching because we need to be taught the word of God. Matthew 5, verse 7. Now, these would be the Beatitudes that Jesus spoke up on the mountain to his disciples. It says in verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So when we give mercy out, God gives us mercy back. Oh. Then look at Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, we're speaking about mercy, one of the things that God requires of us. Luke chapter 6. Let's go there in verse 36. Luke 6 and 36. It says, mm. well, let's start with 35. 
but love ye your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing again and your reward shall be great and you shall be the children of the highest for he's kind unto the unthankful and to the evil be you therefore merciful as your father also is merciful oh it's hard to be merciful when someone takes advantage of you but that's what god requires of us to have mercy back to micah then it says and to walk humbly with that god humbly well the word walk means to carry to bear to prosper to spread when we walk we are to carry the word of god with us we're to walk humbly then humbly means and they're interested means be humiliated and not respond unkindly no pride no pride but think of jesus totally humiliated he was stripped he had nothing on on the cross total humiliation in front of everybody but he was humble he humbled himself he was humiliated for us so that we can also understand that humbling ourselves is so important. So what are the three things that we have to do? We have to walk, do justly. In other words, do what's right. Love mercy. Be kind. Be kind to one another. Tender hearted. Forgive those that have hurt you. Don't look at those that have done evil to you. Bless them that curse you. Play, pray for them that spitefully use you. And then to be humble. Never say, well, look what I did. Because I tell you what, even the very breath in your lungs is a gift from God. Yes. The humility that we have to walk in. Never taking credit for anything. Because God is the source of all life. He gets Hallelujah. all credit. Hallelujah. He gets it all. Amen. We're going to take the Lord's Supper. And in order to do this, we need to do some preparation. Hello, everybody. We're just glad to be with us today. The Lord's Supper is an open table to all believers. Now, the Lord told me to speak about the word believer. You can believe that Jesus existed. You can believe there's a God. But until you believe that he is the only way, the only truth, and the only light to come to the Father through his shed blood and salvation and redemption, you're not a believer. You can be religious, but you're not a believer. So, the first thing we need to do is make sure you're a believer. Because you don't want to take the Lord's Supper and not be a believer. I want you to confess this with me. I want you to say this. Jesus. Jesus. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. And I need a Savior. And I need a Savior. I know that you died on the cross. I know that you died on the cross. Your blood was shed. Your blood was shed. And on the third day. And on the third day. You rose from the dead. You rose from the dead. And you sit now. And you sit now. At the Father's right hand. At the Father's right hand. Awaiting those. Awaiting those. That trust in you. That trust in you. I'm a sinner, Jesus. I'm a sinner, Jesus. I need a Savior. I need a Savior. Please forgive me of my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. Wash it away with your blood. Wash it away with your blood. And save me. And save me. I receive you now. I receive you now. As my Savior. As my Savior. And my Lord. And my Lord. Amen. Amen. The next thing as we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we begin by examining our heart. When we come to the table, we must have a pure heart, a pure conscience, free of sin. How do we do that? We ask the Lord to reveal anything that you need to ask forgiveness for. And then allow him to cleanse you with his blood. Maybe you're walking in fear. That's sin. Maybe there's unbelief in your life. That's sin. Maybe you need to forgive someone. That's sin. Maybe you need to forgive yourself. That's sin. Maybe you just need to get your act together because you've walked away from God and you're coming back today. Come back with a clean heart. So close your eyes and ask God to show you if there's anything that you need to ask Him to forgive you of. Are 
right as it comes to mind, I want you to say with me, Father. Father. I know that I've sinned. I know that I've sinned. In word. In word. And deed. In deed. Please forgive me of my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. Wash me afresh and anew. Wash me afresh and anew. With the blood of Jesus. With the blood of Jesus. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That your blood cleanses me. That your blood cleanses me. From all sin. From all sin. And has redeemed me. And has redeemed me. From eternal separation from, from eternal you. From eternal separation. From you. From you. Amen. Amen. So as we examine our hearts, remember that communion is a memorial to what Christ has done for us. He paid the ultimate price in the break of his body, which is represented by the bread, and the shedding of the blood, which is represented by the cup of grape juice. Every time you receive communion, you are remembering Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. It's often called the heal that meals. The meal, excuse me. The meal that heals. So as you come to the table today, <coughs> expect to receive all that Jesus has for you this morning. Hallelujah. God has a sense of humor when he made me. So we take the cup and we take the bread. If you don't have it, you can do this later after we're done. And we just say this. Father, on the night that Jesus was with his friends, they sat at a table, and he told them that there was one that was going to betray him. And just like that one, we've all betrayed you, Jesus. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But he spoke to the disciples, and he said to them, as he picked up the Passover bread, he said, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. Then he took the cup. He said, this cup represents my innocent blood being shed for you. As you drink this cup, remember what I'm about to do for you. Take and drink you all of it. <coughs> remember, there's requirements God has for us. And one of them is what we just did. He tells us that as often as we take communion, that we do it in remembrance of him. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me my great salvation, so rich and free. Lord, we thank you for your word that reminds us of what we are required.